Hello, I'm Seamless, and now we're going to be talking about the image page and resynthesis. It is resynthesis, not resampling. I called it resampling for a very long time, and that's just because I didn't know things. Now I know things, and it's resynthesis. So the way that this works at its, at its core, without getting too technical, is that you can take whatever you want, you can drag it in here, and it'll recreate whatever it is. Give it, give it. In harmonics. Give it, give it, give it, give it, give it, give it. And it's a lot of fun. Give it, give it. So the way that it does that, and we, we sort of covered this before, but the way that it does this is that it samples some time over time, and it figures out what the harmonic content is at that particular moment, and then next moment, next moment, next moment, and then it fades through them. Except it doesn't actually really phase through them so much as it actually moves. Because you can see here, the harmonics, they're not... I mean, I can show you what what, what uh, fading would look like if I were to do this. Give it, give That's what cross-fading would look like. Give it, give it. And this would be essentially really, really good vocoding at... Um, 516 bands because you can see here the harmonics are coming in and out very slowly as as the, the content moves through it but then if the scale is where it was we get more regular activity you might be wondering what the hell that was just then and why it was happening and that has to do with this sharpness knob the sharpness knob is there to attempt to like act like how the sound had to sort of uh, preserve some transients, especially at lower speeds. Give it. You can have that off just fine. Give it, give it. And at normal speeds, it'll pretty be okay, but then back again. Give it. Give it. Give it. Give it. That wet right there, that was it trying really hard to have that moment. Give there's a couple, there's different, two different sides of sharpness. There's uh, transients plus phasiness, and then there's transients only. And that's trying to, this is sort of what it's trying to process in order to behave in a normal fashion. Give it, give it, give it. So that phasiness business. Give it. <laughs> it looks weird. The phasiness business is why this sounds smoother give than this. Give even though sharpness is on, so why does it get sharp? Why doesn't it get sharper? The sharpness really only is, matters when there's pitch scale involved. So let's talk about these two scale knobs because there are two of them. This one Give pertains to the pitch level and speed, and it's pretty well, pretty regular. And when it's on by default, this position it says it's basically this, this is normal amount, and then you can go you can go even higher harder than that, Give where it basically over exaggerates what it's doing. And then you can go the opposite, where it detects movement and then goes in the other direction. Give it. Which is pretty weird. Give it. There's two different kinds of, uh, well, there's two. There's a lot more than, than two. Different kinds of freak, uh, freak, uh, frequency reading that goes on. And honestly, I don't mess with these a lot. Give it, give it. Sometimes it results in better results. Give it. Sometimes it doesn't. We also have octave mode, hertz mode, wide hertz, and then unison, which... Give it, give it, give it, give it. Which appears to have something to do with using the unison modes. Give it, give it, give it, give it, give it. I get it. Okay, so instead of changing pitch, it, it's saying that this is actually having more, uh, is having different, has different values versus unison mode. That's actually really cool. Okay, I'll have to experiment with that later. So what, what's happening is that um, in, in unison mode, um, give it, give it, give it. <laughs> I had the pitch all the way up, but it doesn't really sound like I have the pitch all the way up. Because if, if I was not if I was on regular regular modes, give it, you would hear that. But if I'm, I'm on the, the give it, it's specially applying um, this distance to this value now. It's actually really cool and could have some interesting impact on um, bass resampling. I keep saying resampling, resynthesis. So that's something that I need to do later. You've just observed me learning things. How cool is that? 
different other modes as well. Which can be a little intense. There's a lot of strange things you can do with the resynthesis, and it's honestly quite fun to just screw around with. So, experiment with that and find out neat stuff. We also have this formant control knob over here. Give it, give it, give it, give it, give it, give it, give it. Which does what you'd expect from some formant controls, except it does it in a bit of an interesting way. You can kind of see how there's these main harmonics that move around, and then there's sort of filtered like positions that get moved around. <laughs> And that's what it's moving around. Now, fun fun as well as anything else that happens in Harmer, we had turned the mix on, it's not on, it's not doing anything, and if it's on, it does its best as well to try and preserve the form of characteristics per note. As opposed to... But if we do have it all the way on, and we're... Give it, give, give it, give it. I was wondering why that sounded weird. If we have it all the way on and we not do we not actually move the knob, we can go into the drop down menu to the image forming mutation window, where we can now alter the forming characteristics at a per harmic range basis. Give it, 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 which if you mess around with it enough, you can actually use it to do things like change particular vowel characteristics into other vowels entirely. And then you can move it around to it if you want. That basically creates the center line is where the knob is, and if you move it around, it moves this profile up and down, which is pretty cool. The other scale pertains to volume. This is a little bit like some weird visual compression because if you see here, there is there is a darker, there's darker and lighter uh, levels, and that basically the lighter ones are the louder harmonics, and the darker ones are the darker harmonics. All the way down, it takes those darker levels and essentially pumps them up. Give it, give it. And all the way up, it essentially it brings down all but the brightest. Give it, give it. Which is why this has it has that kind of lo-fi watery characteristic. And then we also have the mix knob, which applies essentially this how much this change is happening. Because right you can see the timbre window is still solid square type. So that's what the mix does. Really got to mess around with that unison business. Give it, give it, give it, give it. Yeah. So on top of the speed, we have regular speed. We can go forwards. Give it, give it, give it, give it. We can go backwards. We also have course speed. And we have the just the regular time knob, which actually, if you get rid of the speed entirely, you can use this to scrub it. You see, however, how the white line doesn't necessarily move as well, like perfectly with what you're doing, and that's because of the smoothing knob, which if you turn it all the way off, it'll adhere directly. And so this is a little bit like how you can use it to treat it kind of like a wavetable. I say kind of like because it's not literally exactly like a wavetable, but it is pretty handy. There's some looping options you can create. Um, different looping all right, concepts. You notice how when you turn this on and off, like you get this little bit of white noise back there? That's not because it's out of sync. That's because this moment of harmonic content is nothing. And then the next moment of harmonic content is the very beginning of everything, which it's fading into. And that's the fade that it's creating right there. And if it wasn't, it wouldn't do it. For a long time, I thought that I had made the sample wrong when I put him in there. But no, it's uh, that's just cross-fading into the beginning for looping. 
uh, what else is important about this particular area? So up here we have it shows us the, the plan, the frequency, the frequency gain, and the, the, the both of them, so you can get you know information. You can also oct octave or, or heart weight the sound, so that you can either see what's doing in either either way. Um, and then we have a whole lot of options about the dropdown because this is called the image tab, right? Image resynthesis. And right now we're both we we loaded in an audio file to resynthesize something. However, you can actually load in. Um, image like actual pictures let's see uh let's clear it and then open image file let's use this guy ha ha, ha. Uh. And yeah, there were a couple other options you can saw you saw here. It says generate random cloud. She could do weird things. Uh, the thing about the audio file, though, if I were to drop one in here. Is that we can convert it to an image synthesis mode, and it's a little bit different when it's an image synthesis mode. Give it, give it. it still works. It's a slightly less high quality. Give it, give it, give it, give it. But for all intents and purposes, it still more or less works the same way. The value of this, however, is that now when you save this preset it will actually save the picture in the preset. And you don't have to worry about having the audio file because when you put the audio file in there, it has to still have the audio file somewhere accessible by the project for you to be able to open it up and resynthesize it again every time you open up the preset. That's something to keep in mind. Pretty handy stuff there. There's also a bunch of uh, preset options for things like mapping time offset to keys so that you can trigger particular moments in, in like the key to time and that kind of thing. Uh, and other cool ideas like bouncing loop envelopes and that, that sort of stuff. And so just handy dandy little utilities that you could do without, you know, having them there. But it's good to have them there because honestly, it's a lot easier. Um, there are some quality settings that are, that are important inside uh, the advanced tab. Mostly like, you know, generic versus high precision. High precision mode will uh, spread the resynthesis over a lower note, which typically gives it um, more harmonic content to work with, which is why it's better. Uh, pretty much, though, this is a, re a reasonable look at how the resynthesis works. And the, here's the here's the value of resynthesis, and one of the reasons why a lot of my early career was focusing on doing Harmer resampling, what I call it, it resynthesis. And that's because it's, ta it's taking the audio file and it's turning it into a synth, which means that you can do synth stuff to it. Like, even beyond, you know, all the crazy Harmer stuff, all the additive synthesis, like the prism, unison, and filters and changing of phase and that kind of thing you could also just use unison on it which is hard to do with a sample because a unison isn't a isn't an audio effect it's a voice effect which means you're doing it by playing more than one version of the sound at the same time some samplers have that ability you can just do that like contact can do that and I'm, i think other daws have samplers that can do that actually fls can do that too but it's different in harmer because it's a, it's a bit unique in its application, if it's because real audio, doing it with real audio means that you're working with it with its perfect original actual self. The resynthesis for how good it is isn't actually perfect, and it's those imperfections that give it a little bit of very interesting quality. And also, you have way more control over it because of all the added stuff that we talked about before. So that's why it's super duper valuable to do even the most basic kind of processing with resynthesis. However, there is one more thing that we should talk about about resynthesis, and that's how to do stereo resynthesis. Because by default, if you just drop in a stereo sample, it will um, not be stereo. So let's find that says. Okay, this is in stereo, so let's use that. Sorry, I wanted to find something else in stereo. So I dropped this in there. It's very much mono now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to engage number B, drag it in there, go to the advanced tab, and grab this button that says side. And so now we have a mid side split between this sample and this sample. 
If you're not familiar with what mid and side are, mid is the middle of your stereo spectrum, which is to say that it's the content that is shared evenly between both of your speakers. Because when you have a mono signal, it's essentially a signal that is evenly being displayed between both your speakers, which make it feel like it's in the middle of your audio spectrum. And then uh, uh, the side is the opposite, which is information that is unique to either the left or the right stereo. That's the left or right um, monitor, which is to say completely stereo. So we have the mono and the stereo, which combined together form the uh, stereo image of the actual original sound. Benefits of this, um, I mean, you, just, you can resample stereo, but if you want to, you know, there's this part licking thing, which means that if I make changes on one side or the other, it'll make changes on the other side, which is handy. And if, but if you wanted to make like an envelope change, like you're saying, you're, you're making changes to stuff here, there's a drop down button here and it says copy to part B. So that means that A and B both have the same of everything. And as long as this is engaged, whenever you move a knob, it will move both sides. However, if you automate one knob, it will only move that one knob because it is still just one knob. So if you want to automate both parts, you have to link both knobs to the same automation, which is pretty easy to do when you're doing uh, like macro mapping because even though there's two parts, there's still only the one modulation X. So moving the mod X will move both of them together. So. Kind of fun stuff. Anyway, that's it for image resynthesis. Resynthesis. It takes like the word I hate. I hate saying the word synthesis. It's just, damn. Anyway, um, I hope that made sense. If you have any questions about that, please let me know. Let's move on to the next part. <laughs>